Okay, so this problem, uh, spinal problem here will be from my engineering design course for the year 2020, 2021. So we're going to go through this, uh, the cover sheet right now. The first thing it wants to know is create the following part based upon the orientation of the origin in the picture below. So a couple things you want to point out here. I know it's hard to see. I should have some alternate views in here, and I did not. They were there at one point, but apparently somehow they've been lost. But I will tell you that this origin is dead center of this part right here, right in the middle of this disc right here. Now, there's a couple ways we can approach this problem. The first way we could do this, and it would be the stuff we did from last year, would have been what I call the hack and whack method or the cake method, which is to start with a disc, do a midplane extrusion, and then begin to add layers or build extra pieces on as we went along, adjusting as we go with cuts, chamfers, fillets, and the, uh, basically the you know using your whole your whole wizard if you chose to. But instead, I want to try to really focus on efficiency here. So I'm going to do this one in the most efficient way I know how. And I see a round part. So I'm thinking right away, revolve. Okay, so looking at this part right here, here's the actual drawing. What I'm going to do is focus on the front plane right here. And I'm going to basically split this right down the middle of the front plane. And I'm going to create the upper half of this part. Or in this case, really, I should be creating the lower half of the part. And then I'm going to revolve it. That will then allow me to come back and make the final cuts here and here, along with a slit going down the front and the four holes. So I can do this in about five steps versus about 10 to 11 in the other process. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get into my SOLIDWORKS with a file new. In this case right now, I'm going to go ahead and hopefully get my SOLIDWORKS up and running here. And I'm going to start with a file new. Okay, now it's going to give you these little notes in here. That's okay. Just say yes. I've already set up my SOLIDWORKS templates, as you should have also. I'm going to go ahead and this part, and I'm going to go back and just do a quick double check. I do see the metric box in the corner. So I will start this as a metric part and say okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put my plan into action. So again, looking at this, I'm going to go to the front plane, and I'm basically going to draw this lower half as I see it right here, cross, and I'm going to go ahead and then revolve that. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily slide this over right now so I can bring this to my other screen. And then from here, I'm going to come into my SOLIDWORKS, go to my front plane, start a new sketch. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start by adding in a center line. Okay, and I'm going to use this center line kind of as a reference point because it's going to help me with my dimensioning and it's going to give me a line to revolve around. Now, again, i got to be careful because I want this origin right in the middle of that disc. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to come a little bit from this origin here. I'm going to draw basically a line straight across. I'm going to come down. I'm going to come in, and then right before the origin, I want to draw a down for the disc. And I'm going to kind of get that centered up here in just a moment. I'm going to come out this way, dip in a little bit, and over, back down, a slight flat right here. Then I'm going to draw an angle. Okay, now don't worry, this is a little short. It's okay. Uh, draw that angle right there. Slightly draw up. Draw out. And I'm going to go ahead and attach it right to the line. Now I'm going to hit escape because I don't want to draw a second line. I'm just going to take this line original and attach it to that original line. I've noticed a couple of people I've walked around in class. You're having a tendency to have multiple line segments on one line, and that is bad practice. That can cause you some problems, especially when it comes to CSWA certification exam. Okay, we want to keep all of our lines as one unit. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and take this origin. I'm going to use my control key and go to this midpoint of this line down here. Okay, so I'll blow up really big on that. Hover on that and hit my control key, left click, control key, left click, and make these vertical. So what it's going to do is it's going to lock the center of this disk to this origin. Now, what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to start turning on my dimension tool and throw on the dimensions I see in the drawing that you should have up on your screen. Okay, so starting from this back end right here, I'm gonna come down this way. I'm, I'm basically doing the opposite direction. I'm going down, so I'm gonna make that 54. This dimension right here, according to the drawing, is gonna be 12. Uh, the height of this dimension here, so this 
diameter of this back end right here is 26. Now, you can do one of two things. You could go from here to here and say, okay, 26 divided by 2 is 13. Or you can simply go in here and say, all right, from here, and if I touch the center line, I can create a diameter dimension. Either way will be acceptable, but this is the more preferred practice. So I'm going to type in 26 to make that diameter from here to there is 26. I can do the same thing with this diameter right here. According to the drawing in the top view, this is a diameter of 60. So again, I'm going to hit that line, hit my center line. This only works with the center line. It will not work with a solid line or an object line. So I'm going to left click and I'll pull out here to my left and make that 60. Okay, so now I'm starting to see some black. That's a good sign. So now let's kind of make some adjustments here. That's 12. Move it over. This right here is going to be 13. This diameter here, uh, looking at the top view, that diameter is going to be a diameter of 26. So again, I'm going to hit this line here, this line here, but I'll pull this out towards the front and make that 26. Okay, now I'm not going to panic. I'll hit escape for a second. I'm just going to grab this and pull this down. It's all right. I'll pull this down a little bit more. Okay, pull this line down a little bit more. Just adjust as you go so that way you don't get caught with anything. Okay, uh, the next dimension I'm going to put in here is going to be uh, a dimension from this front point to this front point. That will be 15. Uh, the diameter or the distance of this point right here will be 8. Uh, let's see, this from the very front to the very back right here, I'm going to put up. It's going to be 170. So that shrinks that down a little bit. Um, the diameter of this front piece from here to here will be 12. Keep that close. Okay. The diameter from here to, excuse me, um, from here to this line here is going to be, in this case, that will be 22. And that again is from the top view. The diameter from this point right here to this line here will be 18. Um, and let me see what else I need to do. 15 from the front edge of this part here to the front edge of my disc is going to be 45. Okay, so we're getting close here. Now, uh, looking at this 45, 15, I'm just looking to see what other dimensions I may be missing. Um, the overall length of this piece right here, I'm going to have to do a little bit of thinking. So that's 170, uh, let's see, 54, so 170 minus 54 plus 12 is 66, plus 45 is 111, plus uh, 50 is 161. So 161 minus, 170 minus 161 is 9. So 9 plus 50, that makes this length right here 59. Oops, that's already already this, uh, defined. Okay, so that means I have to get the dimension to, oh, I know what it is. I need to relate this line here because this is the same diameter as this one. So all I'm going to do is make this point here and this point here horizontal. And there you go. And now I'm fully defined. My dimensions are in the same spots. That way you can kind of see where everything is coming from. Now again, these diameter dimensions that I have only can work if you have a center line. If not, then you're going to have to make this one to be, for instance, 13. This one to be 30. Because then at that point, you have to cut them in half. Now, taking from here, I go to my Features Toolbar. I do Evolve Boss Base. The line's already been picked, and in that case it was that center line, but I could also have picked that line also. That would work, but in either case, I do a revolve with the center line picked. There is my finished pro well, not finished. There is the first step of my project or process. I need to add material, so I'm going to right-click and go edit. I'm going to change that to a 304 AISI. Apply, close. Now, good practice. I'm going to do a control save. It's going to pop up where I want to save it. I'm going to go ahead and put this in my desktop here. Uh, actually, I'm going to go to 
uh, create a folder out here because mine is getting very full on uh, basically in my H drive. I got to get that expanded out, but I'm going to call this with all caps Spindle underscore my last name. Okay, I want your last name on there. Good practice. Now from here. Uh, excuse me. All I'm going to do is start cutting away. Now, if I go back and bring this drawing back into view, I can go to my front plane, and all I'm going to do is just draw a rectangle on the front plane in two spots. Okay, so I'm going to do two rectangles on the front plane, and then I'm going to do a through all cut both. All right, and what that'll do is it'll cut this piece off, give me that flat face there. They'll cut this piece off at the same time, give me that flat face there. Then all I have to do is then come back in and put that hole in, this slit in, add these four holes, and I can be done with this. And actually, in this case, I may be able to, depending on the plane, uh, these are on different planes. I cannot do this cut and this cut. I actually, I probably could do this cut at the same time. Um, but since they're not through all both, this one actually doesn't go all the way through. I have to do these as two separate cuts. Okay, so I'm going to put this into action here. So I'm going to pull this over again to the side. I'm going to go to my front plane, start a new sketch, space bar, normal tick. Turn on my rectangle, corner rectangle tool, and I'm going to attach it to this back corner. Pull a rectangle. Go to this front corner. Maybe. Come on. There we go. Sometimes you have to just kind of mess around with it. And now what I'm going to do is turn on my Smart Dimension tool. I'm going to do this one here as 30 millimeters long by 6 millimeters high. I'm doing this one here as 50 millimeters long by 3 millimeters high. Okay, and that is right from the front view. Now, if I hit my space bar and go to my isometric, here's what I'm looking at. So this is sitting right in the middle of the part. I'm going to go to my Features tool extruded cut and do a through all both hit my check mark okay so now that is done the two flat surfaces are there i'm going to do the control s to save now i'm going to go ahead and hit this face right here i'm going to go ahead and you could do this face you could also do your white plane because your white plane is right in the middle that would work also but in this case I really have nothing fancy going on, so I'm just going to hit this face right here. I'm going to start a new sketch and do a space bar normal to. Now, you have to be careful on this because if we look at our view here, and specifically I'm going to blow up on this bottom right view here in the corner, there is a construction circle we must put in first, and that's going to have a diameter of 46. And then all I'm going to do is to that circle, I'm going to attach four independent circles make them all equal to each other at a diameter of six. But the key is to get this construction circle on first. Sliding this back over, I am going to go ahead now, draw a circle that is attached to my origin. But before I kick out of here, I'll go over here to my left and say for construction. Notice it didn't, it, the blue went away because SOLIDWORKS does not see this as a solid line. Turn on your smart dimension and make that 46. Turn on your circle tool and add four circles. You can also add one in pattern. You can do a circular sketch pattern. You can also do a circular feature pattern. Either way will work, but I'm just going to go ahead and draw the four at the quadrants. Make this first circle up here a six. And then holding my control key, I will highlight or left click on the edge of the four circles to, so they all turn light blue. And to my left, make them all equal. Check mark. And now from here, if I go back to my isometric, I'm simply going to go to features, extruded cut, and do a through all. Now, I'll go ahead and cut this front face right here. I'm going to cut the rectangle, add it in my chamfered edge, and we'll finish off that small circle in the back. But I want you to realize that we are almost 80, probably 80% 80 or more done on this, and I have only have three branches of my design tree. Okay, if I would have done it the other way, I'd probably be on branch six or seven by now. Okay, so this is much more efficient. 
I'm going to go ahead and start a new sketch on that surface and do a space bar and a normal tip. Taking my corner rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and draw a large rectangle just so I can see. And then to help me out here, I'm also going to draw a center line. And I'm going to attach it to my origin. I'm just going to draw it straight out. That's fine. You can just go this way like so. And the reason I'm doing this is going to help me in my dimensioning. Because what I'm going to do is dimension from here to the line at 1 millimeter. And then this whole edge will be 2 millimeters. Okay, and again, I'm getting that from the detail view that's in the drawing. The length of this rectangle will be 32. Okay, do not be afraid to use construction lines and construction circles to set things up. It makes it a lot easier um, when you're going through your dimensioning processes. Okay, now from here, again, if I'm in my isometric, what I'm going to do here is go to Features, Extruded Cut, and do a Through All. Hit my check mark, and now that front cut is there, taken care of. Okay. Now it tells me to add a one millimeter by forty-five degree chamfer. So under my feature toolbar, I'm going to go to my fillet tool and drop the arrow down. Put in a chamfer of one millimeter, not ten, one by forty-five. I'll blow up so you can see where this is going to go. It's going to be this edge, this edge, this half moon here this half moon here. This is flat on the inside. Do not hit these two inside edges. Hit your check mark, isometric, control, save. Okay. Now all that's left for me to do is to put this hole in the back. Okay. So if you look at our drawing again and I look at the hole in the back, this note tells me everything I need to know. It's telling me I need a hole that is diameter 6 that is only going to be cut down 14 millimeters. It's not going through all. Okay, it's going to be dead center of this uh, 26 diameter circle. Okay, which will so we'll measure to 13. In addition, it's going to be 12 in from the back edge. All right, so I'm going to put that into practice. I'm going to highlight this back face, start a new sketch, space bar, normal two. Draw a small circle on this back. It's in line with the origin. That makes it really easy. I'm going to turn on my smart dimension. I'm going to make it a diameter of 6 millimeters. It's going to be 12 millimeters from this back edge. And it's going to basically be from here to this back edge here at 13. Okay. You could also add a relationship between that center and this origin and make them horizontal. All right. Now at this point, if you remember the note, it says it's not through all, it's going to be a features extruded cut, but a distance of 14 millimeters. 1, 4, enter. Hit your check mark. Spacebar isometric, control S to save. Your part is now complete. Now at this point, I want you to go in and find uh, your center of mass, so you would go to your evaluate in your mass properties, whatever the mass is and the center of mass is what you're going to enter, and I'm not going to show it in this video, you're going to enter it for me into the assessment associated with this part in Schoology. Now the next part of this, because you have to submit this part into Schoology, I need the drawing also. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into that now by going to File New, GHSA Metric, OK. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that. Make that disappear. Now, there's my spindle. I'm going to double click on it. Start with my front view. Turn on the preview. Hidden lines are on. Scale is at 1 to 2. I'm going to start with the lower left corner for my front view. Bring in my top. Go over here to my right side and bring in an isometric. Now, again, if you recall from last year, we had this little arrow with this box. I'm just going to crossing window, hit delete, grab my metric, and then as you click on the metric, if you come over here to the left where it says border, none, and go to box, it will add a new border back on here. Okay. Now from here, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of cleaning up just to make sure I have all my center lines. That looks good. I am going to have to draw a construction circle 
So I'm actually going to sketch on here real quickly a construction circle or a circle for construction. Okay, that is important that you draw that in. Sometimes it comes on, but if it doesn't, you need to actually physically draw it in here. Okay, top view, I'm looking at this. I've got all my center lines. I'm going to come to this view here and add in my color. Now, please make sure you highlight and get rid of all your black lines. Now, there's one more view I have to put in the middle. It's called a detail view. So I'm going to add that right now by going to view layout tab, detail view. And all I'm going to do is come up here to this top view, approximately in the middle of this bar, probably right about here, left click and draw a large circle. I'll put it up this way. And then I'm going to drag this down to the middle. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. Now, if this does not say A, then over here to the left, caps lock, letter A. All right, so there's your detail view A. Now, from here, it's just a matter of adding in all your dimensions. All right, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either do uh, your uh, annotation tool and do model items. In this case, since I did all my dimensions below, they're all going to come in below. So I'm going to go ahead and just dimension it by hand by going to my smart dimension. I'm going to start basically from the back and work around. So I'm going to get the same look. I'm going to set them up just like I see in the drawing just to make life easier to know I have all my parts or all my dimensions in place. Flip that arrowhead inside. 54 from here to the back edge. Uh, this will be 12. Put that right along there. And again, I'll blow up on this so you can see a little better. The 45 will be from this front edge to this edge here. There's my 45. I will add in the 13. Uh, the 8 will go here right below. 15 from this point here to here. I'll take and flip the arrowheads. Nope, the arrowheads are good there. I'll bring the 8 in a little bit tighter. That looks good. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Uh, the 50 will be for this front cut right here. And, oops, now this has been a common mistake. I guarantee I've already seen this on a couple I've graded. The reason this happens, I clicked that line, but the line stopped at the chamfer. So what I really need to do is delete that off and measure from this line here to the very front here to get my 50. I will hit this line here to get my 3. Um, and then from the very front to the very back here. And I'll put my 170 above. So this view is now done. Okay, I'm going to work to my right side view. In this case, on the right side view, I'm going to make this very easy. I'm going to go ahead and just use a whole callout. I'm going to click on this top line. It's just going to say six through, no big deal. I'm just going to come over here to the dimension text box. And I will add the rest in. I will add in my four space X. Okay, and then I'll push it. Okay, you, have, you may have to do, uh, do not show this again. I'm just going to say, do you want to continue? Yes. I don't want it to show me again because it's going to otherwise drive me nuts every time I hear that bell. Okay, mod diameter. Do, do, do. Oops, I lost my carrot. That's not good. So let me get that back. All right, four diameter six. Delete there. Okay, um, through, and then I'm going to take and put my cursor here. Enter, evenly, spaced, on, enter, a diameter symbol, 46, B, C, period. Okay, base center circle. Base circle is basically what that is. Okay, hit your check mark. Adjust this as you need to, and that is now done. I'm going to go up to my top view, add some key dimensions up in the top. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and turn my Smart Dimension tool back on. And now I'm going to add in those key elements. For instance, I'm going to go here, diameter 6. I'll pull that down, but then over here, I'll put my cursor behind, hit the depth or the down arrow, and type in 14. Okay, so that one is done. Check mark. Turn my smart dimension back on. So from the circle to the edge here will be, oops, let me delete that. Sorry, get up closer. From here to the edge will be 12. From here to this edge here will be 13. 
The diameter from here to here will be 26. I'm going to flip those arrows to the inside. And then from here to here, I get my 60. Now you can see I'm a little bit tight right here, so I'm going to back up for a second, take my front view, because they're all tied together, and slide them in a little bit. Slide my right view over just a little more. Put this up in the middle. That looks good. Okay, constant adjustments as I work on this. Okay, that takes care of this back in. That looks good. And then I'm just going to add in all my dimensions from here to here. This will be my diameter 26. Okay, from here to here will be my diameter 22. And from here, oops, nope, not there, sorry. That's going to be from um, point to point, sorry. That point to point will give me my diameter 18. Okay, so there's all my numbers there. Again, I'll just slide this up a little bit tighter. That looks good. So now all my dimensions are done here. Finish off with my isometric view, or not my isometric, excuse me, my detail. This is going to be 32. Uh, from here to here will be my 1. From the top to the bottom here will be 2. And I don't know why the one went shooting way out here in the space. So I'm just going to grab that and bring it back in. Bring this one in a little bit tighter. And then finish off with top to bottom. I get a diameter of 12. I'll flip those arrows to the inside. Okay, last but not least is I'm going to add a note using my note tool. I'm going to click on that chamfer. I'm going to drop my note, but I'm also going to have a bent leader over here, middle, third row, or fourth row. And in here, I'm going to type the following. One, caps off, MM, space, caps on, X, space, 45. And the degree symbol is over here to your left where you see the CL plus, add symbol. Degree, okay, space, and then chamfer. Hit your green check mark and then adjust your note as you need to. And at this point, this part of the drawing is done. Now what I need to do is add in my note at the top. So what I'm going to do is open this up here and copy this with a control C. Come over here, turn on my note tool and drop it here and do a control V. Now, I'm going to take these all to a font size of 12, left justified. Click outside, hit your escape. Okay, now it looks like I need to pull this down just a little bit more, create a little more space here in the middle, bringing this down, bring this one down, like so, and there is my note. Okay, now I expect you to type your mass in here your X, your Y, and your Z. I'm not going to show those with you. Those are on you. Okay. Don't forget to change your title block. Okay. This will be the spindle part. Okay. Put your first initial last name, the correct date, period, and scale. Scale today is at 1 to 2. All right. When you are done with this, you will do a control save, and then you are going to submit this drawing and the part together into Schoology. If you don't submit the part, I cannot open your drawing because it'll just go blank because it wants the part with it. Okay, at this point, you are done with the spindle assignment. Uh, make sure you get those masses submitted in, get these parts and drawings turned in.